Hello everyone. Welcome to today's Momenta webinar. What's your digital game plan? Let me give uh, 30 more seconds for a few more people to enter and then we'll start straight away. Hopefully everyone's having a good day today and uh, we think you'll enjoy the content of our webinar with our guest panelists. Okay, let, let's get started. So again, welcome to the Momenta webinar, What's Your Digital Game Plan? A Playbook for Success. I'm Jesse DeMesa, a partner based in San Francisco for Momenta and head of Momenta's advisory practice. I've been a founder along with a number of our uh, practitioners of successful startups acquired by global industrial leaders uh, prior to Momenta, I was the CTO for GE Oil and Gas and Digital, leading industrial internet and digital transformation, focused on the energy oil and gas sector. Uh, prior to that, I've, I was at Siemens Industry and Energy as a portfolio leader GM responsible for the manufacturing intelligence services and products across all industries. Today, I'm joined by three thought and business leaders driving digital transformation in their industry segments and companies. We have Matt Hatton, industry expert at Wireless Noodle, Mike Sira, VP of IoT and Insights at TELUS, and Subrata Chakrabarti, a VP of Product Marketing and Strategy at Anaplan. So really excited to have this panelist, group of panelists with us today. A little bit about Momenta. Uh, at Momenta Partners, we are connected industry growth partners, a highly and industry recognized integrated advisory, talent, and ventures investment practice. Uh, we're laser focused on connected industry digitalization, where we help accelerate and provide growth options and activation uh, for the industry as a whole, all the way from early stage companies to large uh, corporates. We're set apart by our strong bench of deep practitioners who have held executive roles leading digitalization and digital transformation journeys with some of the largest brands in the market. Uh, GE, as mentioned, uh, Schneider Electric with our chief architecture of EcoStructure and the former CTO of IBM Watson, just to name a few of our, our advisory bench. And we're founders of successful connected industry startups. Also, as purpose-driven investors, we currently are managing two funds uh, focused exclusively on tech disruptors and innovators in the connected industry space across uh, layers of technology and also vertical solutions. Our advisory practice and engagements leverage the strong intelligence capability and our insights along with our ventures and market landscaping for transactional advisory and acquisitions and talent to advise on digital team development. As you can see here, we work at the intersection of the entire connected industry ecosystem, uh, bringing together and working with the entire value chain from startups where we've made over 25 investments, uh, digitalization strategies and activation, and, and with pioneers and market leaders culminating in the largest uh, connected industry acquisitions. A little bit about Bright Talk. Uh, please submit your questions via the questions pane. We will get to as many as we can. Today's presentation will be recorded so it can be shared and played back at, at your convenience and for others. And additional resources are attached to the presentation and can be found on our website. In today's agenda, following my introduction and a short presentation, we'll have presentations by each of our panelists and end with a summary and Q&A session. Now onto my uh, short presentation. Now let's discuss the transformation many companies, including industrials, are facing. Uh, we know this is a time of major transition, so we'll explore how organizations are progressing through their digital strategies and transformation. Uh, we see, uh, we've, uh, typically we go through five stages of digitalization, uh, yet where are we today and what do we expect? Uh, today, we're going through the same, we've gone through the same cycles that have affected corporations in past, 
for example, re-engineering in the 1990s, e-business in the 2000s, essentially going through the same life cycle, peak, hype stage, et cetera, thousands of pilots, POCs, the trough of disillusionment. Today, from our surveys uh, that we've had through our network, a critical mass, uh, approximately 70% of companies are now have digital business units or standing those up. And uh, what we see going into 2019 is a good a portion of those are expanding across their entire organizations, baking it into their entire uh, businesses and business lines. Uh, what do we take away from this slide? What we take away is a, a couple key things. Overall, there's significant opportunity, but it's characterized by distinct use cases. Uh, there's many use cases, but we see that essentially 10 or so use cases represent 70% of the total spend and focus of the market as a whole. And we see that spread across these use cases, across energy, utilities, oil and gas, aviation, transportation, etc. As well in our survey, uh, we've identified uh, top priorities and some of these are, are key to driving digitalization. Organizational, a requirement to scale, and it's fundamental to embed these core competencies, as, as we know, uh, throughout the organization, and that's a very difficult process. Uh, analytics, there's a huge focus on ultimately the insights and business outcomes that will be derived once the foundations of a connected industry, connected platform are in place, and ultimately, Engaging and driving the ecosystem is critical to generate any significant results based on your crown jewels or the core differentiation of your business. This is a common theme, innovation. But the key thing here is that transformation cuts across the entire life cycle of products and services with your customers, i.e. from design through product and lifetime services, especially going beyond the asset and the optimization of a single asset across the entire production logistics chain. So you're, we're really seeing um, players and suppliers move to deliver value more broadly from their maybe single uh, service or single asset that they might deliver to the end market. Uh, one of the broader transformations that's affecting all industrials, including OEMs and suppliers, and any partners in this whole connected industry, industrial value chain, is the transition from traditional industrial to digital industrial. And, and the focus here has been on two major areas that I'll highlight. One is on the early concept stage, which effectively means you need to get closer to your uh, customer and your customer needs, and there's a higher degree of customization or uh, tailoring of the customer needs as opposed to kind of one-size-fits-all product or service. So really getting earlier in that stage of validating and delivering and understanding those needs and feeding that back from seeing your products or services in field and use. The other primary focus is on the right-hand side here is really about uh, moving more and getting deeper into the operate and maintain phase with your customers. Uh, really to guarantee higher outcomes through the entire life cycle of using your products and services and expanding beyond a single equipment or service. So getting deeper into the whole uh, engagement with your customer over the entire life cycle of their engagement with your products and services. Uh, just uh, ending my section, take a little bit to discuss the five-stage momentum engagement model. Uh, we've worked with the largest corporations with a focus on digitalization of connected industry companies, uh, really established industrials and OEMs, and any suppliers in the space, and even early stage disruptors. Uh, and that comes really from our focus on our ventures investment practice, but not only the companies we invest in, but the companies we support and assist in connecting across the ecosystem to deliver ultimate business outcomes. Uh, from defining the strategy, to most importantly, activating that strategy through offerings, potential acquisitions. I mean, many times we see here to activate a digitalization strategy, a lot of times through acquihires or acquisitions of technologies or products. That's, that's critical to any success of driving that capability into an organization to have a whole portfolio offer. A few very important takeaways here that I just want to highlight before I move to our next speaker 
is really seek out experienced uh, practitioners uh, like ourselves or others to extend your core teams, de-risk and accelerate your time to market, uh, and realize that business impact and customer value. The real trans challenge here is the transition uh, from of the execution of the overall strategy and corporate vision into something that's tangible and engages with the market and your key customers, and then expand and scale beyond that. So consider both evolutionary and revolutionary opportunities. Where the value, where is the value added to existing lines of services? But then also try to consider what's the bigger play, the 10x business opportunity that really means you have to engage the broader supply network and value chains that are being challenged and reshaped. More than anything else, uh, another key point is change management and culture is the major barrier to unlocking this opportunity. So you need a, a partner or you need to engage in uh, supporting you through this process because a lot of this is about an organizational transformation. And more importantly, Start with your customer journey, understand how that validates your strategy and objectives and the broader market opportunity working across your ecosystem. And next up is uh, Subrata Chakrabarti, VP at Anaplan. And uh, over to you, uh, Subrata. Thank you, Jesse. I am really excited to be here today talking about this important topic of digital transformation. Now, I have spent a little over two decades uh, working with the customers, and right now with Anaplan, we are working with our global 2,000 customers, large organizations around the world in a number of industries as they are embarking on this very important journey. Now, they are working with Anaplan to plan better, connect their plans with the data, people, all of the elements that bring together the best decisions going forward. In many cases, their world is changing. And in some cases, the entire industry is being disrupted. So they not only need to plan better, they also need to connect their plans to the executions and learn from it and make the best decisions to serve their market in a much more transparent manner so they can bring the best service and product experience to their consumers. They want to do so with the help of technology. So let's talk about some of the objectives that they have in front of them. Number one, they need to provide long-term forecasts, mid-term forecasts to their suppliers and vendors. But the difference is they need to do that with more confidence, with a better measure, with a better sense of accuracy. So it doesn't have to change a lot downstream, which impacts cost. Now, that goes hand in hand with maintaining the just-in-time inventory. Now, inventory, a lot of the times so we think about goods and services, well, primarily goods, but it could be also about skills, the resources that need to be available at the right point in time to deliver, again, the best customer experience. Do so in a way that can address the shift in the consumer dynamics and behavior. In many cases, Consumers are now buying or trading goods and services either in an online manner or in a retail store or maybe in a hybrid fashion. How can you provide the best experience under all these circumstances? And how can these organizations also adapt to the market changes quickly while introducing innovative and new products and services to their consumers? In essence, we are talking about what these organizations are trying to deal with is to shift the human focus from everyday tasks that are repeatable, that could be automated, move on to more human value-added decisions that can look at not only what is happening, but what might happen. What are some of the things that they need to get better at predicting and understand what the consequences are? These are driving the digital thought leadership. And while they're thinking about all of these imperative, they have to also keep in mind their corporate goal and objective, both at the global level as well as at the regional level. So if you think about you know, how Anaplan is working with some of these global organizations, how are we starting this transformation journey? Number one, we really encourage the organizations to think about what are their signals, the signals that drive their businesses, the signals that may come from their internal data and performance such as sales or inventory as well as customer feedback, 
or it could be coming also from some of the external sources, signals such as weather or travel patterns, or it could be even financial indices, performance in the consumer market, in the mind, how people buy or consume products. Now once that is done, how can we automate some of the basic steps from a planning point of view, from a decision point of view, and then shift, like I talked about earlier, the human focus from data gathering or information gathering to more the value-added decision. But in the context of that decision, what can technology do to provide some insight? So in essence, these organizations are really interested in investing in technology that is going to be an always-on system. What it means is it is no more a static system that is only looking at things as is or things as it happened, rather things as it could be. And when it does, some way affect your consumer, your buyer, your supplier, what actions would you take and in what confidence would you be able to take that action? So let's talk about you know, what is happening on the ground with some of these customers. Uh, let me walk you with a couple of examples starting with HP, one of the storied brands in the technology industry. HP is a very large and complex organization when it comes to their processes. What they're lacking, what they were lacking before embarking this journey, there was a gap between what they're designing from a planning point of view, what they want to do, versus what is happening on the ground. Lack of visibility, lack of collaboration. As they have a number of territories across the world where the sales is coming through, how do you make sure all of that sales performance is tightly aligned to the corporate goals? How do you assign the right quota planning or territory planning across all of these regions? While working with Airplan, one of the things we wanted to do for HP is to bring all of that in one central location when it comes to the sales planning. Now, that's where the focus is not just about bringing data, but bringing people together in collaboration, working with that data so that you can get sub-second response and give these sales managers and the account managers ability to make changes on the ground in real time. Think about what could happen if the market is changing, if a new competitor is coming in, what sort of changes they need to make in their plan and adopt to it. Let's shift our example to another uh, global brand, Unilever. Now, many of us use their products every day. Great consumer company that are dealing with consumer and hygienic products and goods. The market is very, very volatile. When you think about consumer markets, consumer space, in the CPG industry as the demand is changing continuously. Now, Unilever sells their goods and products across the world. Some of them move very fast. Some of them are very seasonal. Some of them are, they are perpetual winners. So they, people go to the stores, buy those specific brands every time they're shopping for that specific product. In some cases, though, some of their other products have a long tail, don't sell as much. So how do you think about a planning process? How do you think about a demand planning and a supply planning and inventory planning and decisions that go with it that can account for this diversity of their product behavior. And again, keep in mind, in all of the different regions of the world where people might behave slightly differently. So they were thinking about working with Anaplan when they embarked on this journey is to not only understand what the demand is, but rather where the demand might be going. How can they sense the demand? How can they provide the real-time response? And do so in a way where there is some kind of support by technology that can anticipate these changes and provide algorithmic responses. Shift human behavior or human decisions more in the value-added side, not on the data punching side. And certainly not last but the least of the uh, companies that I had the privilege working with and our companies working with is the United Airlines. Now, you and I, all of us, we take flights every day, every week, going from point A to point B. Airlines business is a very tough business in the sense that it's very competitive. There's a tremendous focus on margin. You think about where the volume is, where the demand is, how can you grow your top line, while keeping an eye on the bottom line, while keeping an eye on the cost. How do you make sure you have a clear view of all of the cost elements? And where you can, how can you make a change to adjust anything that will give you that benefit on the cost side. With United, when the data was everywhere, and you don't know how the cost elements are going up or down, and the performance 
is being affected on the financial side, it was very difficult for them to make the right decision and collaborate with each other. With Anaplan, one of the first things they wanted to do as they embarked on the digital transformation journey is to bring all of the data in one location, what is called Data Hub. Now, this Data Hub is becoming the central platform, if you will, in orchestrating all of the planning and decisions downstream and upstream. And the result is where you can course correct by knowing what are the specific cost elements within a given day, within a given hour, you can do so with the full confidence. You can save time, and as a result, the behavior is shifting. There's a cultural element of decentralized decisions that really helping United to make the decisions on the ground for a specific operator level at a regional level while keeping their top line growing significantly. So in summary, what we are learning while working with these global uh, leading customers around the world in, in a number of different industries that I talked about, that moments matter. But it's the insights in the moment that matter the more, most. Because that's where you can do something about it. You can either improve your top line or reduce your cost effect by doing something, by having the data, and making the right decision. Let's think about automation, where it can be automated, where steps are more predictable, more repeatable, and provide the augmentation in the context of human decision making. It's not really about replacement. Right? Now, in order to do all of that, you've got to know your data, right? You've got to know your data that is coming from your sales, from your customers, your suppliers, how people react to your products and services, as well as other data that might be important, your competitor data, or how your industry might be shaping up in the future. Now, bring all of the data in a location so people can learn about the business first. And the technologies such as machine learning, artificial intelligence, robotics, IoT, they are here to help. They are here to help not just about you finding the results, but also the insights that will come along the journey. So you can know more about the business and provide the best services to your customers, to your suppliers, and do so in a way that makes you competitively differentiated. Now, next up is someone who knows it much better than I do, who has this specific topic in his title, Matt Hutton who is the digital transformation expert at Wireless Noodle. Matt, take it away. Thanks, Zabrata. That introduction was wonderful. I should say a few words of introduction to myself as well. I have been a technology industry analyst for more than 20 years, most recently founding a company called Makina Research, focused on Internet of Things, data analytics, and a couple of other topics. Uh, I was the CEO there. We sold that company to Gartner in late 2016, and I worked for them for a couple of years. I'm now under a flag of convenience in the form of my blog, Wireless Noodle, where I record the odd thought about the world of technology. Over the years, I've had the luxury of watching the technology landscape evolve and change. And of course, there's been a lot of macro trends to watch along the way. One of the most interesting ones, I think I can sum up as the fact that the enterprise has become more distributed and more automated. And that trend rather tracks my journey as an analyst and gives some interesting context for thinking about this evolution towards digital transformation. In my early days, I was focused largely on basic connectivity, how a work is provided with mobile phones or a leased line to provide communications between existing nodes, not missing a client call, faster data gathering and exchange, that kind of thing. But in the last few years, there's been a shift towards connecting a lot more nodes and making more and better use of that connectivity that's available. Of course, there's early adopters who have been doing this for decades, and there's nothing new under the sun. But the extent to which telematics allow greater information gathering has become notable. But that wasn't the end. This basic telematics, for instance, smart metering, gave way pretty rapidly to IoT. Of course, a lot of this is just about semantics. But living through it, it was quite easy to perceive a significant change from old-style M2M telematics, where a thing was connected for a single purpose, to a new style, which we might call IoT, where the data generated from a whole bunch of connected things was integrated with a whole lot of other data sets to achieve a bigger objective. Example, initial deployments of IoT or telematics in the energy sector were about automated meter reading, say. 
simple cost saving by remote data gathering. But the models that are coming through now that are much more interesting around virtual power plants are anything but simple, providing for the management of the relationship between distributed generation, distribution and consumption assets within energy grids, much more complex set of relationships. The intelligence of an increasing number of enterprises expanded out to include those distributed assets, which, let's face it, most companies have. And then with that naturally comes more automation. If the assets are connected, they can be given some element of, of autonomy. That brings me on to my next shift, which is to digital transformation, which seems to have become the term du jour, supplanting IoT. I don't want to get into definitions but for me, the shift that's represented by digital transformation is all about using tools that allow for distribution and automation, be it IoT or AI or distributed ledger or whatever, to be brought to bear on how the organization works, transforming it in the process. What I want to talk about in the next couple of slides is how this transformation should properly be considered and applied. The prime mover for all of this discussion around dis digital transformation is, of course, new technology. I've mentioned a few in passing, but the list is almost endless. Robotic process automation, quantum computing, drones, you name it. The interesting thing there is you're looking at technology and the impact on how that changes companies. Of course, technology has always changed organizations, the seed drill, the steam train, the PC, and so on, all of which disrupted various markets and, and created others. What's different now is that all companies are becoming technology companies. I tend to think of ICT spending by enterprises as falling into two categories. First is wheels on, which is about regular everyday ICT, and wheels up, which is about new strategically important initiatives that transform the core operations of the organization. What I've noted in the last couple of years is a definite growth in the latter. Not that the former becomes less important, you understand, but the latter has certainly become significantly more important. This means that ICT becomes integral. It permeates the core of what the company does rather than just being a support act. And because it isn't just an adjunct to the core business, success in ICT, or at least the wheels up piece of ICT, equals the success of the business. The need is therefore to change the processes of the organization to reflect the new technological reality. So the key word here is transformation, not digital, which in a way is a little bit of a, of a meaningless term. That being the case, we come on to the second leg of the stool, the commercial. In every successful technology implementation in this new digital transformation environment, the technical and the commercial proposition must be compiled in parallel. I've been reading about various companies, one being Hindustan Unilever, who have established digital transformation cross-functional groupings. And you need this kind of initiative, maybe not specifically in a formal way, but it needs to achieve the objectives of bringing the various interest groups within the organization together. I spent a good deal of the last three or four years talking to organizations that are running proofs of concept in IoT and related areas. My rule of thumb is that about 80% of projects in IoT are trials, and of those, about 80% don't progress to full commercial deployment, there's a lot of POC hell. Most organizations need to develop a more mature approach to their projects, understanding both the technical and commercial implementations, as well as thinking out the strategy for going from trial to full deployment. What tends to collapse the scrum is that most technology POCs are run by the IT department to explore interesting technologies without necessarily having a view on the real world implementation. I mentioned earlier the important thing about the digital transformation was the transformation, not the digital. IT cannot alone implement the company-wide transformation necessary to make these things a success. DT, digital transformation, is not a IT project. The third leg of the stool is end user. Pretty simple, but worth stressing. Most organizations that seek to implement new technology, even if they've thought about the commercial model necessary, might not have looked at the impact on the end user, or not maybe to a sufficient degree. They need to take an external and holistic view of the impact on the whole process. One example would be Kaiser Permanente, which takes people from the IT department, sticks them in a hospital bed to go through the experience of how technology affects the patient. The key thing when thinking about end users is, does it make a difference? 
don't get me wrong, if it doesn't make a difference to the end user experience, you can still do it. Not everything touches the customer, but you better have a damn good reason for doing it, and you better check that everything you do does affect the customer, or how it affects the customer. Finally, so what? Firstly, DT is more about transformation than it is about digital. The internal process and behavior change is more important than the technology. If we could dump the word digital, maybe we should. But the moniker seems to have stuck. The focus must be more on process and people transformation than on the technology. As usual, tech is not the barrier. You need to scope out the full impact of the deployment. No hobby projects, please. If you're running a POC, run it in both technical and commercial senses and know where it's going and how it affects the whole of the organization. Involve your C-suite. If this is so transformational and so multidisciplinary, which it generally is, you need way more than the IT department on board. I've done surveys which show that Technology implementation, which has a C-level involvement, are significantly more successful. I focus mostly during my few minutes here on end users, enterprises that are deploying technology, rather than the suppliers of that technology, who, let's face it, suffer worse from POC challenges than the most. The key for them is to do better lead qualification. If a company hasn't thought through the commercial implications of what they're doing or thought about next steps, they're just hobbyists and not really worthy of serious attention, unless it's to help them make a more holistic plan for getting there. Check the implications of what the customer sees. Always have one eye on the impact on the end user product and check that relentlessly. Finally, more holistic horizon scanning is required. If all companies are becoming technology companies, more than ever, those companies need to understand the changing technology landscape, and not just those that have a direct impact. To give an example, and I'm not picking on this as a vertical particularly, if you're a retailer, today your technology horizon scanning might be limited to specific retail technology, supply chain, drones, Bitcoin, a few other, other things. But it misses things that might come out of left field. Companies, they would need to understand technology, all technology changes, and secondary and tertiary impacts that those might have on suppliers, competitors, regulation, etc. With that, I am going to hand over to our next speaker, who is Mike Sira, who is the B VP, Internet of Things and Insights at TELUS. Over to you, Mike. Thank you, Matt. Good to be here, everybody. Uh, my name is Mike Sira, and I've been in around the uh, mobility uh, software and network business for the last uh, 20 years or so. My current focus is uh, driving the IoT and analytics business here at uh, TELUS in, uh, in Toronto. Uh, for those of you that don't know TELUS very quickly, it's, uh, it's uh, one of the leading telecoms here in the uh, Canadian market. And as uh, an interesting proof point perhaps around the opportunity to really digitize and to stretch out, um, beyond uh, where you are in terms of your normal business. Uh, Telus has actually done a pretty good job of um, creating new practices uh, that are very material to our business today, both in uh, the healthcare IT space as well as in the business process outsourcing space internationally. So proof points that the phone company, for example, can do more than just uh, be the phone company. We've uh, managed to really create in some interesting businesses over the last number of years. So just quickly to talk about IoT, um, driving the IoT business here at TELUS, uh, I am given the opportunity to meet with all kinds of different customers with different problems um, and opportunities. Uh, I, I think what I've tried to do here is just to try and summarize what I've seen as being the key drivers for adoption. Um, I think first and foremost, the one that really leads the way is probably cost of ownership. So this is really the opportunity for digital to provide opportunities to take cost out of the business. Uh, often we're asked the question where to start. Uh, my recommendation on where to start is to focus on repeatable processes, uh, repeatable workflows that you uh, as a business owner rely upon. So whether it's um, uh, trying to figure out how to improve upon expensive machinery, uh, uptime challenges, or better visibility around a field service work, uh, workforce in terms of trying to get the number of deliveries that your, uh, your teams are work, worked on every day down to uh, a lower number, 
uh, or trying to improve upon uh, challenges that you have around overtime hours for your field service teams. Um, these are good opportunities, I think, to, uh, to create significant benefits for your business. Uh, as you research and reach out to experts to get started to learn more about the opportunities here, you know, I recommend you challenge them on uh, showing you the money, showing you the ROI tools that they should have uh, as a way to demonstrate how they can bring material success uh, to your business and help you find a better way to, uh, to digitize different practices in your business. Uh, the second one quickly is, uh, is insight. Uh, in terms of adoption. So connected, censored things and processes are really incredible game changers. Uh, think about those companies that make hardware. Uh, that is, they are, they're in the thing-making business. You know, for years, car companies, for example, they sell a car and they hope that uh, perhaps three or five or so years later, the customer will come back and, and perhaps buy another vehicle from them. Uh, you know, these companies are really disconnected from their customer or have been traditionally. Enter the connected car opportunity, uh, which is certainly growing in prevalence today. So you now have cars that are connected to the internet and connected back to uh, the manufacturer, for example, giving them a better opportunity to really start to actively monitor uh, the behaviors of, of the driver and the behaviors of the vehicle. So looking at things like braking and speeding, uh, as well as perhaps providing opportunities for them to actually interact and uh, alert their customers around perhaps a vehicle fault that needs to be addressed around a transmission issue or a braking issue where they have the opportunity to start to build a service relationship and you know, effectively a real relationship with their customer. These are, these are tremendous opportunities. You know, in terms of uh, those are both proactive. I, I think one uh, or two examples that uh, are probably more on the reactive side but are important in terms of how change is coming to different industries. Uh, one would be in terms of competitive elements, and the second would be competition. So, you know, your competitors, um, for better or for worse, are probably actively looking, if not implementing, new services around technology today to either reduce costs or perhaps to provide uh, new levels of customer engagement for their customers and uh, therefore put you at a competitive disadvantage. So it's important to be proactive here. Uh, similarly, with regards to regulation, uh, we see regulatory changes playing out in commercial uh, spaces today. So, for example, in the transportation market, uh, drivers in, in some parts of, uh, of the world now are required to log, uh, use digital tools to log the number of hours that they've driven and report those hours to prevent um, accidents. Uh, or in the food service industry, we've got uh, a number of countries who are now requiring um, uh, businesses to log the state and temperature of, of food that they're producing. So rather than reacting and chasing these deployments, um, the opportunity is there and it's exciting to go and try and embrace uh, you know, digital opportunities as opposed to be uh, coming in on the back side of it. Key success factors. Uh, I think that you know, probably the, the first one and not always uh, obvious is to try and start with something that you know or something that you do well. So look at a, look at a particular problem for example, something that's been problematic that's material to your business and that is where I would suggest you try and start as opposed to going off and trying to create something that's new or uh, perhaps exciting inventive but really outside of the norm of where you really rely upon, uh, you know, sort of driving business, supporting your customers. Try and stay connected and close to the things that you really focus on. Uh, similar in terms of focus, I would suggest that the problem has really uh, got to be the center of all of this for, for a company that's looking to invest. Um, it's interesting how many times I see companies who are they're wooed over or uh, you know, impressed by a piece of technology, uh, one small piece of technology that they think can help them with a very specific part of their business. But typically there's a lot of interconnects that that device needs to talk to different other things, other parts of their business to make it all work. And uh, if you get overly fixated on the technology and on the, you know, a specific device, for example, um, I think it tends to take you away from the, the fact that really you need to stay grounded in the problem as a way to really bring change and to bring success in terms of digital. And lastly is it relates to you know, how do you really get change that's going to be um, material and it's going to last. I think you've got to bring cultural change. It's got to be something that's brought on, usually from up high within the organization. Uh, ideally, you've got uh, one or several of the, uh, the C-levels who 
are really, uh, you know, excited and interested and committed to embracing uh, digital change as a way to bring, uh, you know, a new way for the business. Uh, I think that if it's done in a siloed fashion or if just one or two small uh, proofs of concept, for example, those typically don't work. Uh, there's got to be that, uh, that strong buy-in uh, from up high and that strong push from up high. Just one quick uh, use case I'd like to provide or customer success that we've seen uh, here at TELUS. This is uh, the city of Brampton. It's a small city outside of uh, Toronto. And this is specifically around uh, a city that was looking to deploy winter uh, connected uh, operation uh, software and hardware into their uh, snow plows and into their trucks that plow the roads here in, uh, in, uh, in Brampton. Uh, this was simply an opportunity for them to, to get to a more connected state in terms of all these vehicles so that they had better information that was coming in with regards to uh, the state of the salt spreaders. So salt spreading is a big part of, if you live in a cold climate, you know that the salt on the road is an important part of how you get the salt away. Uh, so the salt spreaders, and as well as the blades, which are very, very expensive to plow, um, these are often areas where you've got failure or challenges in terms of monitoring. Uh, the activity of vehicles. So having that insight, the ability to start to monitor sensors around the, the salt spreaders or the blades or even just the vehicles themselves in terms of the routes that they're on and where they're plowing, this can bring substantial change um, to an operation. Uh, in terms of the benefits that we've seen, uh, we've seen higher accuracy reported uh, in terms of those spreaders and the, um, and the blades themselves. We've seen improvements in terms of overtime pay. More visibility among the drivers has been able to, has allowed the city to reduce the overtime that's being paid out to its workers, as well as better visibility gives them more insight around where fuel is being uh, spent and perhaps trying to reduce idling time for vehicles. So interesting, I would say you've got a situation where cities, which in some cases can be slower to adopt technology, we've started to see a real upswing from, uh, from cities, municipalities around the benefits of how digital can really bring change to, their, uh, to the way that they run their cities and better, uh, you know, a better experience for their community. So I think that's it. I'm, uh, I'm out of time. So with that, I'll hand it back to our moderator, Jesse DeMessa. Thank you, Matt. Uh, great presentations by our panelists. And now we can get to a, quick, a few quick summary observations, and then our Q&A session. So a few key takeaways, just summarizing everything what you heard. Obvi uh, just one note, uh, the presentation slide will be available to those registered for the webinar. Uh, what one, ensure your digital initiatives really leverage where your market is headed and where your customers are going to see value. Uh, be careful not to overinvest. Maybe also importantly, be careful not to underinvest, yet in the end, set expectations appropriately, establish the key metrics that determine where you are on that journey and how you're extracting value and delivering value. Uh, considering having an executive leadership team, this gets a little bit to the C-suite questions we're getting that we'll bring up in our Q&A session. But bring in the executive leadership team, the business unit heads, to formally evaluate but be engaged in the digital, uh, let's say digital benefits to the market and customers. And as Matt said, it's about the transformation more than the digital, but digital is uh, driving the underlying enablement of that transformation. Uh, help cultivate cross-expertise between groups, IT especially, technology, and your business domains. And uh, it was highlighted in the presentations. Make sure you address that concurrently uh, while you're going through that ev um, evolution. And remember, it's the insights and it's the outcomes that really are important to the market and deliver business value, not the technology while being a key enabler. And now to some, some questions, let's uh, move. But before we say that, uh, the key thing is here is change before you have to. I think the message is uh, consider the disruptions, consider the uh, way the market landscape is changing. Uh, there's a lot of change in that. Evaluate it carefully and consider where your place in that is for delivering value to your customers. Now to the Q&A session for our panelists, uh, just uh, covering one simple way. Yes, the, um, the presentation, the recording will be available uh, post this um, webinar. Now let's get to some very specific questions. Maybe I'll start with a, a directed question to Matt about explain wheels on and wheels up. 
Yeah, happy to do that. What I'm getting at there is the emerging duality of, of IT, so two roles for IT. One being about keeping the wheels on, dare I say, the mundane roles of IT departments, phones, PCs, back office systems, that kind of stuff. The other being wheels up, the, the takeoff of new initiatives, and that's all of those things that we're talking about here. AI, IoT, distributed ledger, all of the really fun stuff, which is becoming much more important in terms of the activities of, of IT departments, but needs to involve a lot of other people within the organization. It can't just sit solely within the IT department. That's a simple answer to the question. All right. Thank you, Matt. Now a general question to the group. What about a manager really getting C-level, uh, sweet buy-in, executive buy-in for a transformation project. Uh, maybe we'll start with Mike, and then uh, we'll have the others chime in as well. The uh, the C-level opportunity, what I've typically seen, either it's it's something that the C-level guys themselves are passionate about, or, or it's going to them for sponsorship. So trying to identify someone that you think you've got a potential connection with that would allow you to really um, drive the initiative that you have. Um, and I, I think importantly, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter necessarily where they sit within that sort of that higher level of with the, you know, within the organization. So whether they run the IT group or marketing or, or the finance team, I don't know that that matters. I think that there's need and opportunity from any of those segments. I think it's just trying to strike a chord or two with those that you think you might be able to appeal to on some levels to why it's important and exciting for the company, but getting them behind it to really drive uh, the rest of the business, I, I believe that's critically important. That, that senior champion is a critical element in the whole exercise to, to bring that cultural change. Uh, Matt or Subrata? Yeah, this is Subrata. So let me add to that. I think um, one of the key elements that really helps getting the C-suite buy-in is to connect to some specific metrics that they care about. Um, in our engagements with a number of these organizations, there are, you know, depending on the industry, depending on the organization itself, there are specific things that C-Suite is really looking forward to uh, getting a better handle on. It could be, you know, they need to close down certain facilities. Um, you know, how do you determine the right number with, with the confidence? Um, how do you think about, you know, bringing a new product and getting a much better forecast from a sales side, you know, over the next three months or six months, uh, how do you improve your margin in some of the areas, um, whether it's consumer satisfaction from the product side? Uh, there are specific things that can be translated down to those metrics that uh, C-Suite cares about and uh, really kind of operates under those principles. So if there is a specific transformation project the manager is passionate about, I think it will be important to connect to um, one of these metrics in a way. And the other important thing is that goes hand in hand is not to overpromise. So one of the important things that you know the manager should do also is to phase it out. Kind of think about a timeline based, a milestone based approach. So what is possible for this project to deliver in a realistic scenario within three months, within six months, within twelve months, and then highlight some of the investment philosophy that are aligned with this milestone. So Let's say for the first three months, here is the target, here is the improvement we want to see or some of the effects we want to see, and based on that, the next set of investments we want to put in for the next milestone and so on and so forth. I think making it more realistic in that way and grounded to some of the expectations but connected to the top line uh, metrics would uh, probably give some managers a better way to discuss this topic with the C-suite. Can I? Uh, Matt. Yeah, can I jump sure. in with a couple Please, of thoughts Matt. as well? So. I think it's important to distinguish the the message from the root uh, in, in terms of getting to the CXO. In terms of the message, it's about pushing whatever the relevant hot buttons are for the for the executive. Uh, there have been quite a lot of early adoption of new technologies, which have just simply been about cost savings. We can do this quicker and easier, um, and we can get a return on investment of less than 12 months. It's pretty easy to get a sign-off from the from the CFO for that. 
You then think about proof points and uh, emphasizing challenges to the company and coming up with solutions to those challenges and all of that, all of that useful stuff in terms of the, the message. The challenge becomes how do you get to the root to that, that C-suite. The good news is that they are typically much more engaged in this DT conversation. There are now chief digital officers, all of these, uh, all of these good innovation business units coming, coming through with direct routes into a CXO of, of some kind. If you're Hopefully, your organization will be, will be blessed with one of those, and there is a, a more natural route to market than, than might historically have, have been the case. Okay. Thank you, Matt. Uh, the next question I'd like to tackle with the group is, we've seen a number of these digital, major digitally enabled or digital transformation programs get underway, get the backing needed. What do you, would you say, uh, what would be your advice to not losing momentum, to carrying the progress of starting forward? What are the big issues you see that need to be understood and tackled? Uh, maybe start with you, Matt. Uh, perfect planning, should we say? I think the, the issue is that uh, most projects that stumble along the way probably haven't been properly thought out in the first place, mostly, but not exclusively, because it's been framed in technology terms. Let's go and have a look at this technology and see if it works, and then let's see how we can apply it, apply it to the organization. And it's where you try and move, make a move from the technical into the commercial that the wheels fall off because the commercial implications have not been thought through during the technical piece, and it might be a technology that's not particularly useful. It doesn't help the organization with its, its strategic objectives. Uh, so that will in inevitably uh, create, a, create a stumble. So I would, I would highlight preparation, planning, making sure you're thinking through both the technical and the commercial implications of any project before you move away from the whiteboard. Thanks, Matt. Uh, Mike or Sobrata, you want to add to that? This is I, yeah, I would say that I would say that um, the the business of clarity around outcomes is, is is very, very important. So, you know, having a well thought out plan as Matt mentioned and you know having specific KPIs. That, uh, that really dictate whether or not you've got success or, or a lack of success. So that, um, you know, if, it's, if it works out well, that's great. You've, 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 hit, your, you've hit your stride. Um, if you haven't, then I think that's fine and it's time to try something else. I didn't mention earlier in terms of looking at POCs and places to start, recommending that you try several, if not, uh, you know, many, because invariably some of them are not going to work. So having a few going, I think, is a good way to try and find something that will be successful. Okay, thanks Mike. Uh, maybe what I'll do is uh, just to get to one more question, where is the lowest hanging fruit, whether that's in the form of a, a function or a market segment? Um, Subrata, you want to start with like, where do you see the impact of digital, digital transformation happening, uh, whether it's functional, organizational, et cetera? I think we are seeing a lot of the digital transformation projects kicking up in, um, in supply chain area, uh, especially when you're looking at movement of goods and logistics and coordination that requires a number of um, human intervention or uh, allocation of resources, but also keeping in mind fast-moving changes, fast-moving goods uh, that have a lot of timeline issues and changes. Um, how do you how do you connect all the pieces together? So uh, supply chain, you know, whether it's demand planning, supply planning, um, if you look at any of the uh, SNOP side, you know, demand sensing that I talked about, I think each one of those areas we see a lot of that. Uh, more recently, we are also seeing on the financial side, whether it's the um, financial forecasting, thinking about you know budget allocation by uh, different centers, different operational. Um, areas, if you will, but also long-range planning. How do you think about um, really looking at, you know, 
couple of years out in the future or beyond and align that to number of priorities that the organization has? How do you allocate that? Um, I think you talked about industry. I mean, number of industries, uh, especially that are uh, being disrupted from a business model point of view, uh, also driven by you know more um, shifts in the consumer dynamics. Uh, we see a lot more of that uh, coming either from a CPG, retail, uh, financial industry. Uh, see a lot of that from manufacturing side. Healthcare, um, again, uh, confluence of data changes, regulations, driving some of those changes. So. Um, those those industries probably leading, if you will, for lack of a better word, in terms of um, uh, the digital transformation. Okay, great. Thanks, Subrata. Matt, can you add to that, please? Happy to. I think I would highlight supply chain is, is one that I would also have mentioned. I'd throw in manufacturing, mining, agriculture. These are a few that have really... Uh, seen a lot of adoption. I think predominantly because there's a, well, they're the low-hanging fruits because they've got the immediate impact of, of efficiency savings coming through from from uh, from running those those initiatives. I pick that pick out those. Uh, thank you, Matt. Uh, Mike, uh, as a last uh, comment, do you want to add to that point where you're seeing it from your perspective? Uh, sure. I think anything uh, that's high value, that's important to your business, uh, that's material where you lack uh, all the visibility that you want as to what's going on. So whether it's a soda machine or a vehicle or, or a field service team, if you feel that you're, you're not complete in terms of understanding its state, its condition, where it is, is it productive or not, is it working, is it turned off, those to me are the best places to start. Well, th thank you, Mike. Uh, I, at this time, I'd like to really thank the panelists and thank the audience for your time today to uh, really uh, share insights and have a great discussion along digital transformation and really practical uh, guidelines towards how to realize value from that for your companies and for your customers and suppliers and partners. Uh, so I'd, I'd really like to close on, on that note and thank everyone. Again, the presentation, the slides, the recording will be available uh, for you to share. And feel free to, uh, feel free to share that in your networks. And again, I uh, look forward to seeing you all on future uh, web, webcasts uh, from Momenta. And uh, again, thank the panelists. Uh, thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you.